Hello everyone and welcome back to the series Pins of 8085 Microprocessor. Today we are in the part 2. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session. Today, from the pin diagram of 8085 Microprocessor. At first we will learn about the pins 12 to 19. Then we will learn about the pins 31 and 32. Finally, we will discuss about the pins 20 and 40. So let's begin. Now before we move ahead and learn about the new pins, let's quickly revise what we have learned so far. The 8085 microprocessor integrated circuit is actually a 40 pin DIP integrated circuit. Now what is meant by DIP? Dual inline package. That is, in this integrated circuit, we have got 20 pins on both the sides. And that's what's meant by dual inline package. Now when we started learning about the pins, we began with the pins 1 and 2. In other words, x1 and x2. Now these two pins are connected to the crystal, to which via x1, when we apply the voltage, the crystal goes through a deformation. And due to that stress, it generates the frequency, which is then transferred to the microprocessor via the pin x2. Now in case of 8085, the crystal, which is connected to these two pins, is generally of 6 MHz and via X2, the frequency which is given to the 8085 microprocessor is 3 MHz. Now after these two pins, we learned about the pins 3 and 36. Coming to the pin number 36, it is an input pin and it is called reset in. Now this pin is an active low pin, that is, in order to activate this, we need to supply the logic 0. Now when we supply the logic 0 to the pin number 36, it resets the 8085 microprocessor. Basically, it resets the program counter to 0, which means, so far, whatever program was being executed will not be executed anymore. Because the program counter holds the address of the next instruction which is to be executed. Also, through this pin, when we send the logic 0, that also clears the bus. Now coming to the pin number 3, which is called reset out, it is an output pin. Now this pin is used to reset the peripherals or devices which are connected to the 8085 microprocessor. After this we learnt about the pins 4 and 5. SOD is the output pin, which is used for serial output. SID is the input pin, which is used for serial data input. Thereafter we learnt about the pins 6 to 11, which are the interrupt pins. Now from all these interrupt pins, trap is non-maskable. However, RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5 and INTR, all of these are maskable. Now trap is set high by critical situations like power failure or hardware malfunction. Whereas the RST or restart interrupts are used by software instructions. Coming to INTR, it is generated by the devices like keyboard and mouse. Remember, trap has the highest priority and whenever it is high, the microprocessor will terminate its current execution and it will respond to the trap interrupt. Then the RST 7.5 has the next priority, followed by RST 6.5, 5.5 and finally the lowest priority interrupt is INTR or interrupt request. Now coming to the pin number 11, it is an active low output pin which is used for interrupt acknowledgement. So whenever these interrupts apart from trap are generated, thereafter in order to process those interrupt requests, the microprocessor will have to generate the active low signal that is zero through this pin. So that was the quick recap. Let's now begin today's session. Now I hope you remember that in 1977 Intel 8085 which was invented, it was an 8-bit microprocessor. That is, the word length of 8085 is 8 bit. Now, what is meant by that? Well, 8085 microprocessor can process 8 bits of data. That is, it can transfer 8 bits of data and also it can operate on only 8 bits. And that's the reason why the pins 12 to 19 are called the data bus. Now, these pins are named as 80, 81, 82, so on, 87. Notice, these are the pins starting from 12 till 19. Now let's talk about the orientation of these pins. Well, 
these are oriented like this. That is, the pin 87, when the data is sent, it holds the MSB, that is, the most significant bit of the data. Whereas, the pin 80 holds the LSB, that is, the least significant bit of the data. Try to understand this. When an 8-bit data is transferred to or from the 8085 microprocessor, pin number 12 will be sending the least significant bit, whereas the pin number 19 will be sending the most significant bit. So if we talk about the orientation of the data, which is either being received or sent, the MSB is at pin number 19 and the LSB is at pin number 12. Now if you have noticed, these pins are bidirectional pins. Now these can be used for receiving the program code from memory. Now in case of 8085, we have got a memory and in that memory, we will store both the program and the data. Now coming to data, 8085 microprocessor can either receive or send the data to memory or input-output port through which the input-output devices are connected to the microprocessor. And that's the reason why these pins or data bus can also be used for receiving a data byte from an input port or memory. Notice we have mentioned data byte. Now why byte? Because 8 bits is 1 byte. And since these pins are bidirectional, therefore this can also be used for sending out a data byte to an output port or to the memory. Now the question is, how can the same lines be used for both receiving as well as sending out the information? Well, in order to understand this, we need to learn about the next pins, that is, WR bar and RD bar. Now, pin number 31 is actually the WR bar and pin number 32 is RD bar. Now, here, WR stands for write, whereas RD stands for read. Now, if you notice, both these pins are active low pins. That is, in order to activate these, we need to send out the signal 0. Now, let me explain how these two pins dictate the different functions of these pins, that is, the data bus. So, we will take WR bar and RD bar and we will also note down the functions. So, at first, if the WR bar pin is 0 and at the same time the RD bar pin is 1, notice these are active low pins. So, when WR bar is 0 and at the same time RD bar is 1, it means 87 to 0 are now output pins. Let me explain why. We are making WR bar as 0 and RD bar as 1. So this means write mode is activated. Therefore, 87 to 0, these pins are going to be used as output pins since we are going to write. Now, if WR bar is 1 and RD bar is 0, since it is also active low and we are sending 0 to it, and at the same time, we are sending 1 to WR bar. This time, 87 to 0, these pins are input pins. That is, the microprocessor is interested in reading, not in writing. Now, what will happen if both the pins are 1s? This means the microprocessor is neither interested in reading, nor it is interested in writing. That means some internal processing is going on within the microprocessor. And finally, if both the pins are 0 at the same time, that is both RD and WR are activated at the same time, this could only mean that the microprocessor has malfunctioned and we can throw it away. So now I hope it is clear to you how using the combinations of these two pins, the microprocessor can decide what functionality the data bus needs to perform. Remember, pin number 31 is WR bar and pin number 32 is RD bar. Both of these are active low pins and these are output pins. So in order to state either of these are activated, we need to send out the logic zero signal. Let's now learn about the next two pins, 20 and 40. Pin number 20 is VSS, whereas pin number 40 is VCC. Now any integrated circuit must have one voltage input and one ground connection. Therefore, for 8085 microprocessor, 
since it is an integrated circuit, the same should be applied. Now the pin number 40, that is VCC, it means the plus 5 volt DC power supply. Whereas the pin number 20, that is VSS, it is the ground connection. Without these two, this particular IC can never function. Now the interesting fact about these two pins are, pin number 20 is VSS, which is the ground, and diagonally opposite to it, the pin number 40 is the 5 volt power supply. So that's all about the pins 20 and 40. So in this session from the pin diagram of 8085 microprocessor, first we learned about the pins 12 to 19, basically the data bus, which is 87 to 0. Then we learned about the pins 31 and 32. There is the pins which will dictate whether the data bus is going to take input or going to send output. Finally, we learned about the pins 20 and 40. Pin number 20 is the ground connection and pin number 40 is the 5 volt power supply. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next sessions, we are also going to learn about the pins of the 8085 microprocessor. So I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.